The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. When the people saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into boats and crossed to Capernaum to look for Jesus. When they found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, where did you come from? Where did you, when did you come here? Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, you are not looking for me because you have seen the signs, but because you had all the bread you wanted to eat. Do not work for food that cannot last, but work for food that endures to eternal life. The kind of food the Son of Man is offering you, for on him the Father, God himself, has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do if we are to do the works that God wants? Jesus gave them this answer. This is working for God. You must believe in the one he has sent. So they said, What sign will you give to show us that we should believe in you? What, works, what work will you do? Our fathers had manna to eat in the desert. As scripture says, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven. It is my father who gives you the bread from heaven, the true bread. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread always. Jesus answered, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Very good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So today, the theme for our Mass and for our reflection, if you all had noticed at the start of the Mass, before the announcement about the car, you all were distracted by that perhaps, the theme was the bread from heaven, right? Okay, so that was the theme, that is the theme for today's Mass and for our reflection. And when we think of the bread from heaven, just listening to the gospel, we know that Jesus is the true bread from heaven, the bread of life. And he himself claims to be this. Okay? And now usually when we think of bread, we think of Jesus, we'll think of our Holy Eucharist. Right? Okay, and that's correct. He remains with us today. He continues to feed us with himself so that we can have life through him okay so we'll come back to that thought on the bread of life specifically on the eucharist how jesus is this bread of life for us but first i would like us to reflect a bit on the second reading hmm. the reading that i say normally we ignore right sometimes i will ignore it also because too complicated to explain at times but today is a short reading and i think it's worthwhile to help us to reach a deeper appreciation of Jesus, the bread of life. Okay, so for that reason, let's just pause for a moment and look at the second reading. The second reading was taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. And the first line that we heard being read was this. St. Paul says, I want to urge you in the name of the Lord not to go on living the aimless kind of life that pagans live. Okay, I want you to focus on the word aimless kind of life. Okay, you want to change the word aim, you can think of the word goal. If you want to change that word also, you can think of the word purpose. So don't live a life that has no purpose, that has no goal, that has no aim. A worthy aim, because in fact, he's saying that the pagans, they do have an aim or purpose or goal in their life. 
but it is in fact aimless, which means it is off the mark, which means it is not the real aim or purpose for life. And Jesus has already come and he has taught us what that is. And so we continue reading in this second reading. He will then tell us also, don't be corrupted by illusory desires. Okay, so when we are corrupted by illusory desires, I think you all know what that would be referring to. If you are all following Jesus, we know. The things that the world promises, the treasures of earth, right? The worldly things, which oftentimes we might desire, but they are actually mere illusions. And instead, he tells us, our mind must be renewed by a spiritual revolution so that we can put on a new self that has been created in God's way. Goodness, holiness of the truth. Almost I read the whole second reading to you again. Okay, so again, to help us in our reflection, purpose, keep this word in your mind. Desire, keep this word in your mind. Revolution, keep this third word in your mind. New self, and finally, created. And we're going to reflect backwards a bit. When you hear this word created, let me ask you a question. Who made you? Who created you? God, right? Simple catechism question. We all know this. Who made you? God made you. Second question we teach the children, why did God make you? You think of the word why, you link to aim, goal, purpose, intention, desire even. We can link to this word, reason. Why did God make you? Ah, this is a longer answer a bit. Do you all know the answer? I'm sure you know. Many times mentioned already. To know Him, then to love Him, then to serve Him. Got some more or not? Okay, good. Good students, huh? some are good students. And to be happy with Him in this life and in the next. Uh, somehow the fourth reason, uh, forgotten usually. Don't know why. Everybody wants to be suffering and miserable. <laughs> Did God make you to be miserable? No. He made you to be happy. Okay, la, eternal happiness. No, to be happy in this life and in the next. Okay? So remember, to know Him, to love Him, to serve Him, and to be happy with Him here in this life and the next. That is God's purpose for your existence. And when we stray away from that purpose, that is when we are living according to the so-called illusory desires. And in fact, we would be living an aimless, purposeless life. We may have an aim and purpose, but it's probably the wrong one, and therefore it counts for nothing. Okay, so to help us reflect further, to make this personal, to make the Word of God personal to each one of us, you can reflect yourself today, my dear brothers and sisters, when you have time. What is my purpose in life? As it actually is. Forget about the theory. Yes, I know it's to know Him, love Him, serve Him. No. I'm asking you a personal question now. Where you are now, what you are doing now, the person that you are and have become, the work that you are doing, the life that you are living, in all honesty, look at that and ask yourself, what is the purpose of my life in the reality that I am living now? Second question you can ask yourself then, if you have honestly answered the first question, eh? is this purpose aligned to God's purpose for me? Maybe the answer is yes. Maybe the answer is no. If the answer is yes, the life I'm living now is indeed according to the purpose of God. I am in fact at the place He wants me to be, doing the work He wants me to do, being the person He wants me to be. Then your answer is yes. 
In that case, pray to continue along that way and to ever deepen your commitment to the way that God has set before you. But if your answer is no, now this is also possible, then you have to ask yourselves a few more questions. One of which might include, include if I'm not following God's purpose for my life, whose purpose for life am I following? Uh, that also, there are many possible answers. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, there are many people in life, very sadly, they have no freedom even to choose their purpose in life. Very often, they are being constrained, some are being used, some are being abused, made to serve the purposes of others. And oftentimes, to serve purposes that have nothing to do with God's purpose for you, or even for God's real purpose for that person, or God's purpose for humanity. Now, if you find yourself trapped in such a situation, then you have to pray for deliverance. Because if you are not fulfilling and following the purpose of God, you are following the purpose of evil. It may not be morally evil I'm talking about, you know, but it is away from God's purpose for you. Don't think of good and bad only in terms of morality, in terms of right and wrong, sin or not sin. We've got to go beyond that. Our reflection is deeper than that. You may be living even a, a sinless life, but not following the purpose that God has for you. Did you all ever realize that? That's another possibility. So pray then for deliverance. And we pray that in the Our Father. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. A very important last part of the Our Father, don't forget, don't only remember the give us this day our daily bread, remember the end also, deliver us from evil. So this is also something important. Now there's a third possibility, you find that I have no purpose in life. Oh, that one also is quite scary. Because you know why? After a while of living a purposeless life, regardless of right purpose, wrong purpose, this is purposeless. You will start to find there is no meaning in this life. You'll start to feel sad. You'll start to feel depressed. After a while, life is so burdensome. Instead of being God's gift to you, your very existence, the gift of life, so precious, so beautiful, it becomes worthless. And that's when people will contemplate even things like ending their life. Because there's no purpose, no value, end it. Okay? This is one of the worst things that you could possibly do. And it is so sad because it is a total perversion of God's plan of creation. He created us for life, not for death. Remember that. Hmm? So if you are someone who is in that situation, then pray to God to discover real purpose in your life. And do something to bring that purpose into reality. That is when you will start living life again and put aside all thoughts of ending life. But end instead your purposelessness. Okay? Get a holy goal and work towards that. All right. I promise to bring us back to the bread from heaven, the bread of life. Okay? But still, before we reach that, I have one more thing for us to look at. <laughs> but already is in the gospel. You know, the people who came to speak to Jesus in the gospel today, they asked an important question. What must we do if we are to do the works that God wants? 
I was just talking to you about God's purpose in your life. You are doing God's purpose, you are doing God's work. Okay, it's related. So now let's link to this question. What must we do if we are to do the works that God wants? And what was Jesus' answer? It's a very significant uh, saying of Jesus uh, in the gospel. This is working for God. You must do this, do this, do that. Uh, no, sorry. No, you must believe in the one he has sent. It's a very significant reply from Jesus. You must believe in the one he has sent. Jesus' answer is relationship with God. You want to talk about doing God's work, you better be God's man and woman first. How can you be God's man and woman if you don't even know God's purpose or you are not following God's purpose for your life? You want to do God's work, believe in the one he has sent. And it is in Jesus Christ that we have this intimate relationship with God. It is in him and through him that we can really be God's co-workers. We can really be God's instruments. We can really do God's work. Two people can do a good deed. Two people can do the same thing. And yet one person does it out of love for God, another may do it for some other motive. Externally, the two works may look the same. But only God knows. One is his work, the other is not. Externally, we cannot tell. That's also why Jesus says, don't judge. But God knows who is his servant and who is not. Who is his friend and who is not. Who is his co-worker and who is not. So the importance of having that solid and real relationship with God through the person of Jesus Christ. This is what enables us to do God's work, which is to fulfill God's purpose in our life. Okay, homily is coming to an end, coming. Last, last point. What is the last point? As I promise, the bread from heaven. My dear brothers and sisters, when you are hungry, it's hard to work. You'll be distracted, you'll be stuck in that hunger, you may even be angry. And we saw first reading the Israelites are very angry with God. In Egypt, we had bread, we had meat, now we are starving. Oh, they were cursing God. Alleviation of hunger. This is a holy thing to do. It's not good that any human being should be hungry. Unless they are purposely fasting, that's a different thing. But if they are hungry because they have no food, this is not a good thing. But more than that, do you know it's terrible to be spiritually starving? When you are spiritually starving, you also cannot do God's work. Now that is the thing the world overlooks. We might overlook even. We know how bad it is to be physically hungry. But do we realize how terrible it is to be spiritually starving? And Jesus knows that that is why he must give us a spiritual food. When we consume this spiritual food, I assure you, my dear brothers and sisters, we will be spiritually satiated. We will not be spiritually starving we will be spiritually satiated. And that spiritual food, par excellence, is the most holy Eucharist. Jesus giving himself to us. He is the bread of life that has come down from heaven. And he has made it possible for you and me to receive him. Once a week, not only once a week. If you want, every day also you can. You know, there's mass every day in church, huh? not just on Sunday or on Saturday. Every day we can be nourished by the Holy Eucharist. And when you are being nourished by the Holy Eucharist, indeed, you will be able 
to do God's work. You will have the strength and the grace to do what the Holy Spirit is prompting you to do in your life. And you will be able to fulfill God's purpose for your life. So the importance of receiving the Holy Eucharist is so important that the church insists that we should come to church on Sunday or Saturday evening. Once a week, we should come to church and be present for the sacrifice of the Mass and to receive Holy Communion. So important it is that she makes it an obligation. But this is the problem. We remember the obligation, but we forgot the reason why the obligation is there. When we think of this word obligation, it's not a bad thing per se. But when we forget the reason why the obligation exists, then the obligation just becomes meaningless. And we will not even appreciate what we are following. Now, some of us might think the obligation to come to church every week on Sunday is only in view of keep holy the Sabbath day. So, if I'm a good Catholic, I better not break any of the commandments. One of the commandments is keep holy the Sabbath day. If I break this commandment, I will commit mortal sin. Commit mortal sin, I cross the road somewhere, going to the shop, car knocks me down. No time to go confession. Plop, down to the place of gnashing of teeth. Hell. So you say, you, I better get up, I better go for my Sunday Mass. Fulfill my obligation. Now, you're fulfilling that obligation. Why? Out of fear. Fear of eternal damnation. Okay, you fulfill the obligation. But for the wrong reason. Hmm? Obligation is good. Fulfill it with the right reason. A better reason. And yes, it's true. You die in mortal sin. Yes, indeed, you'll go to hell. <laughs> there are some people who think there's no hell. We pray nobody goes there, of course. Yeah? We pray everybody will get a chance to be reconciled with God, to repent of their sins and to receive eternal life in heaven. That is our hope. But the fear, of course, of eternal damnation, it is real. But don't be motivated in your life only by fear. Be motivated instead by love. If you want to fulfill, keep holy the Sabbath day, you want to fulfill the obligation to come to Sunday Mass, let it be out of love for God. Let it be because you want to receive the spiritual nourishment that you need in order to be God's co-worker for the rest of the week. Not because you're afraid of meeting as a tan. Okay? Different, you know, big different. That's why I said two people can do the same thing. But what is the motivation? That is what is important. So if you're here, my dear brothers and sisters, today, out of obligation, whichever motive it is, okay, if you're in the right motive, carry on. If you realize you're in that motive of fear, Father is not scolding you. Father just wants you to realize Turn the fear into love. And you can. So come. Following weeks, come. Don't say, Hi, yeah, I'm coming out of the wrong motivation. I won't come to church now. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't set yourself up for disaster. No, change the motivation. And say, okay, from next week onwards, I'm going to come to church, not because I fear eternal damnation, but because I want to receive Jesus in the Eucharist. And I want to be transformed in my life. And I want to be His powerful instrument. Okay, give yourself a new motivation. And I want to live that purpose that He has for my life. Which is to know Him, to love Him, to serve Him, and to be happy with Him. Only Jesus can give us true happiness, my dear brothers and sisters. And this is what the human heart craves for. It desires it so much. Because why? God made us that way. We all want to be happy. 
If you want to be happy, fulfill God's purpose for your life. If you want to fulfill God's purpose for your life, strengthen and build up your relationship with God and receive Him. If possible, once a week in the Holy Eucharist. If possible, every day even. And if that also not possible, you're not able to come to Mass for whatever reason, you may be stuck at home as a caregiver or something, you can't come even to receive the Eucharist, then encounter Him at least in personal prayer. Because He dwells in your hearts. Don't ever forget that. A tabernacle in church there. So many tabernacles here. Living, walking tabernacles. We are never out of reach of Jesus. If we seek Him, we will find Him. And He wants to bless us. He wants to fill us with the fullness of life. And yes, He wants us to fulfill God's purpose in our life.